In his first summer as Manchester United manager, Jose Mourinho made four key signings. Eric Bailly, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Paul Pogba and Henrik Mkhitaryan. All four of them turned into some of our best players in his debut season. But how will Manchester United's squad look like next season under Jose Mourinho? Here is what I would like to see. I'm going to run through each position, show who I potentially could say is first choice in that position and also looking at the potential alternatives and reserves that we have just to look at the strength and depth of the squad that we should have if we make a few key signings in key areas. And we're obviously going to start off in goal with David De Gea and Sergio Romero. We could mention Joel Pereira here, third choice, not sure how much game time he will get, depends on injuries, but that is an excellent pair of goalkeepers. David De Gea, will he still be here? I really think he will be. Man United standing firm. And if Jordan Pickford is worth 30 million being signed from a championship side, how much is David De Gea worth? Upwards of 100 million, if you ask me. And no, I'm not being sarcastic. Now, if he does leave Sergio Romero, will he come in as a number one? I don't think he will. And we'll have to sign a goalkeeper. I don't know who that goalkeeper would be. But for me, that's what I would like to see next season as Manchester United's goalkeeping options. Now, looking at right back, it was a, I wouldn't say it was a problem position for Man United last year because Antonio Valencia was superb, but whenever Valencia didn't play, we didn't have anybody who could step in and do it and to anywhere near the same level that Valencia did. Darmian tried, Fosu Mensah had a chance, uh, Tuan Zebe also got one or two chances as well. But for me, looking at these options now, I think we've got Valencia as first choice. And as you can see, there's a new name on the list. I'm putting down Fabinho in this squad. I would love to see him be signed by Jose Mourinho. And yes, I put back a Yoko as my first choice defensive midfielder. But you guys have convinced me that maybe looking at someone like Fabinho, who can also play as a right back, might be a better choice for Mourinho in terms of really improving the squad strength and depth overall. And you looking down the list, you can see Damien's also can play there. Fosu Mensa can play there. And so can Tuan Zebe. I think United are pretty covered at right back, especially if we bring Fabinho in. And moving on to the right centre-back position, we can see there's three names here. Eric Bai, Phil Jones and Axel Twanzebe. One key name missing, Chris Smalling. I don't think that Chris Smalling will be here next year. We're also going to do a video on what players I think will leave Manchester United. That's in the future. But for looking at these, that's three decent options. I think Eric Bai, our standout first choice there. Phil Jones... To his testament, played very well last season when he came back from the injury and actually cemented a little bit of a partnership. But then he got injured again and then he went back downhill and then we saw the old Jones come back. I think because of his good form for a period last season, Jones would have earned himself a second chance at Man United. And I think Atul Twanzebe has got to be one of those three choices. Broke into the team, played a right black, played defensive midfielder. Centre-back is his bread and butter. Centre-back is where Twanzebe wants to play. And he can definitely be an option there. Now, moving on to the left centre-back position. As you can see, new signing, one that we all know already, Victor Lindelof. He'll definitely start there alongside Eric Bai. They will be Manchester United's starting centre-back partnership next year. And I'm looking forward to seeing how they play with each other. But looking at the options we've got behind him, we've got Marcus Rojo. We've got Daley Blind. I think both of them can play a job there. Certainly Rojo. He was superb last season. Until that horrible injury he suffered against Celta Vigo in the Europa League semi. Uh, Rojo was one of our most improved players last year. And I think he'll be an excellent backup or alternative to Lindelof. Because I think they'll both get a lot of game time. It's just I think Lindelof will be the first choice. Now left back is a harder position to discuss because we don't know what's going on with Luke Shaw. The consensus is that he will get a second chance under Jose Mourinho next year. And I absolutely hope he does because for me... Out of all the left-back options we've got, he is still by far and away the best left-back. We really didn't have any sort of overlapping runs on the left wing last year. Made it very hard for Anthony Martial, who always got doubled up by defenders. And I want to see Luke Shaw in as our first-choice left-back. Well, if we look at the options we've got behind him, we've got Darmian, you've got Demetri Mitchell, who I think very, played very well against Crystal Palace on his debut. I think he'll be in and around the squad next year. You can also put Rojo and Blin there. And maybe even Ashley Young if he's still in the squad next year. But for me, Shaw is a standout left-back choice. And I really want to see him start next year. And moving on to defensive midfield, as you can see, Fabinho's here again. Now, there are some players that are in more than one position here. Because I think in terms of looking at the squad depth overall, you've got to look at the alternative positions that they can play in. And Fabinho's 
main position is going to be a defensive midfielder. But if needed, I think he might be our second choice right back. But as I said, first choice defensive midfielder for Binho. We certainly need one. Michael Carrick, as good as he was at points last year, he doesn't have the energy that is needed to be a proper defensive midfielder that really is intercepting, winning the ball back and getting the attack started and really grinding the opposition down. Fabinho can do that and some as a defensive midfielder. That's why I'd like to see him there. Alternatives behind him, you've got Carrick and Fellaini. You could also play Fosu Mensa in there as well, a position I'd love to see him play at some point in the future. But certainly, if Fabinho comes in, he is absolutely Man United's first choice defensive midfielder next season. But looking at left central midfield, Paul Pogba is absolutely going to be Man United's first choice there next season. But behind him, if he was to get injured, who are you going to play there? Marouane Fellaini's name crops up again. Maybe Scott McTominay, who obviously made a couple of appearances towards the tail end of last year. As I said, I do think those central midfield positions, when we've got our first choice team there, superb, excellent midfield. Now looking at right central midfield, I'll be honest, I think looking at this and looking at the whole squad, this could be the position where Man United do become unstuck with injury. An injury to Ander Herrera, who is absolutely our first choice there. If he does get injured though, I'm not sure who lines up in there. We could get Fellaini playing as a right central midfielder rather than a left central midfielder. Maybe I'm overlooking that point. But we don't have that many central midfield alternatives to Paul Pogba and Ander Herrera. We are a little bit thin in that department. Don't know whether that means that Mourinho will bring another one in. But looking at alternatives behind Herrera, Juan Mata could drop deep, but I don't really think he's going to drop into that position. You could say Josh Harrop as well. Obviously scored on his debut against Crystal Palace, a moment he will never forget. But if I'm looking at weak points in this squad, so long as we make the signings in the key areas that I've identified, maybe right central midfield is that position, if we are playing a 4-3-3 anyway. And on the right wing, I've gone for Henrik Mkhitaryan. Now, it was an underwhelming first year for Mkhitaryan, but he saved his best performances for the Europa League. I want to see that sort of level of performance from Mkhitaryan in the league next year. And so will Jose Mourinho. But we do have good options out there on the right wing. We've got Juan Mata, we've got Jesse Lingard, and I put Marcus Rashford down there because, because of games like Liverpool away last year, where he was used more as a right wing back, I suppose, than a right winger. But if Mourinho wants to hit on the counter-attack, playing away from home in big games, someone like Rashford might be utilised more as a right winger to allow someone like a certain Morata to play as the striker. Now, I don't want to see him play out there on the right wing. I'd rather see him play through the middle, but I can see it happening at points next season. But for me, the first choice there is absolutely Mkhitaryan. And depending on not whether we play in number 10, maybe that's going to be where Juan Mata is used next year as well. Now, out on the left wing, I've gone for Ivan Perisic, another new signing, as you can see. If Perisic is signed, which I hope he is, because I think he'll add a real alternative to the wingers that we have, or lack of wingers. Every single Manchester United attacker tends to cut inside. Perisic goes outside. He will offer something so different that no other player in our attack can offer. And that's why I think he can add so much balance to our attack and be such a different attacking player. But behind him, you can see the likes of Anthony Martial, I think will still play quite a bit out on the left wing. Andreas Pereira, he's come back from a loan spell at Granada. Very good loan spell and he did actually operate on the left-hand side quite a lot at Granada. And you could throw Ashley Young in there as well, but I don't think he'll probably be in the squad next year. I think now we've got alternatives and the likes of Andreas Pereira coming back into the squad. I'd rather see him getting game time than Ashley Young. And then up front, you can see there's plenty of changes here. Least not the arrival of Alvaro Morata. I've put him down there and I've got Anthony Martial in there and of course I've got Marcus Rashford. But two big names missing. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, he's been released by the club and no Wayne Rooney. I do think that Wayne Rooney will be sold by Jose Mourinho this summer and I think we will play with these three strikers. Now under Fergie, having three strikers would have been a crisis because we play with two up front. Mourinho doesn't play with two up front so I think having three strikers top draw strikers like Morata, Rashford and Martial on rotation, I think that will be enough for Manchester United next season. And for me, looking at that, I think that's a very strong set of options that Mourinho will have at his disposal if Morata does come in and if Rooney leaves. So as you can see, I think the squad will look very strong next year if we do make the signings in key positions, that being a striker, central midfielder, centre-back and, and a left winger. Now, as you can see, there's a few names that have been left out of this list. There's no Wayne Rooney, no Chris Smalling, 
no Adnan Yanaze. You could potentially see Ashley Young leave as well. Maybe Andreas Pereira going back out on loan. But I just looking at this squad, this fills me with hope for next season. Looking at the options that we've got in all the positions, apart from maybe the central midfield, which could be slightly weakened just by one injury, I think United have got a squad there that would be capable of challenging for the Premier League title and challenging in the Champions League up until, I'm not sure, the quarterfinals, the semi-finals. No matter what it is, if we make the right signings in the right squad areas, I think Man United will have the squad overall to compete in all these competitions. And if we're looking at a potential starting 11 for next season, here's what it could look like. Let me know whether you agree with that. There's no Rashford in the starting 11 there. It's Morata up front. There's no Martial out left. It's Perisic. Let me know what your starting 11 would be next season. And let me know your thoughts on Man United's squad overall. Do you think we will make the signings that I said? Do you think that they are the right signings to make? And would you be happy if that was our full squad going into next year? Can they compete in the Premier League, the Champions League and the FA Cup and the League Cup? Let me know in the comments below as always. Drop a like on the video and subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. Till next time, take it easy.